All right, check, check, radio check. I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy weeks. Once again, we've been doing our weekly chats now, and I took a break for vacation. Came back last week, and you may notice that it said June market recap last time, and it says June market recap this time. And it's, you know, from a timing standpoint, because we're doing lagging data, I had with vacation missed May. And as vacation rolled over, I wanted to bring that data. And so it was technically into to June already. So now the data, and I elected, I said, let's just do this back to back so that we can talk a little bit about, you know, the, the data from May versus the data from June and what's on the horizon for July. I think it's all relative and so hopefully this will go smoothly. I might go at a little bit of a fast pace because a lot of it is, you know, sort of similar, right, to, to information I cover. But at least once a month, I like to do a market recap on what's going on in the world of, of equities or, or uh, bonds or investments in general. And, you know, we, we've come off some insurance data, but I can tell you that September is insurance month. So we'll probably circle back to life insurance because it is really important part of our planning process. You know, you'll see I have a, a shirt on Eagle Team. I'm a partner of a group of advisors and holistically across the country, we all philosophically are wired the same way. We believe in education and in, in allowing clients to educate first. And then we can start to think about products that might be a good fit to help them to solve problems that we've uncovered together versus leading with a product, which is what I find most advisors do. They say, oh, here's a size nine. Let's go around to everybody and all from this brown shoe. And that's not really a truly financial planning. I'm a financial planner, a comprehensive financial planner, 30 years in the business plus. We have probably about 100 advisors across the country and they're allowed to invite not only themselves, but their clients onto this call. If they don't make the call, we have them archived and recorded and folks can hop on at a later date. So it's just, a, it's a way that we feel that, that an industry that is quite often you know, confusing. It allows people to sort of take a deep breath, relax, hear some content information over multitude of sessions, and nothing will be sold here today. We're not we're not trying to sell you something. So you leave your checkbooks at home, you leave your wallets at home, and just you know, if you do have some questions, either circle back with me or the advisor that brought you on this call. We're happy to help. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We'll get you out of here and on your way. So, you know, this is a, a equities markets and you see that at the top of this chart, you know, this is for June. So, you know, when we look from left to right, you know, the different colored assets, what I found interesting here where gold was a leader last month, not so much for June. So there's some consumer or public sentiment that, hey, maybe there's still some upward trend basis. Also, I mean, pretty much everything was above the neutral line, right? Zero percent, except for global, which is green, except for um, developed countries in Europe, right? But you see, the leaders are commodities, right? So commodities got beat up last year. Um, commodities have been making a run, right? So it's largely an index that's made up of oil and lumber. And uh, there's some things in there that are catching people's att attention. So for a one month return of a little bit over 4%, followed by real estate. It's surprising to me, but that's where the money is. And then, you know, you have the red, which is your large caps. So those are your S&P index, right? So those are your Fortune 500 companies that did pretty well for the month and, you know, followed by small caps. So overall, June did well, right? And I think, you know, just playing Monday day quarterback, we continue to see this. And I just saw some data before I hopped on this call that July, 62% of the time that a new president or new administration takes over, July is positive, followed by some negative runs in August and September. And if you recall from earlier in the year, a lot of our bellwethers, a lot of our indicators are showing, hey, come third quarter, we might want to look to say, hey, maybe we want to take some risk off the table. I'm not a big market timer never have been, but there's some people that just get nervous. And, and if we're not retiring tomorrow, 
there's no reason, you know, sometimes the markets go down 10, 20%. Just look at last year, COVID. Nobody expected COVID and the markets were down 30. If we take this snapshot for the year, definitely. I mean, a lot of squiggly lines, that, that's an indicative of volatility. Very good returns, right? So you see, again, you see commodities at plus 28%. Well, you know, in, in a short period of time, six months, that, that's really, really good. But what can go up can come down. Now notice just last week we did May, I'm gonna start with the, the worst performer, which is gold, had just gotten back to the 0%. And now, you know, you see for the month of June, it's trailed off. So there's, there's uncertainty in the marketplace. That's what this tells me. Again, real estate, the black line is at 22%. And then small caps are beating uh, large caps right now. Small caps have been, the people that are still in business are, are working hard. I think the, the thing that I hear that they're having the hardest problem with is finding help, right? Finding, you know, people that actually want to come to work so they can get back to work. I do believe there's still upward potential, but not without some risk. So we've got to make sure our portfolios are diversified. So that's the blue and red line. The green line, again, is European developed countries followed by, you know, undeveloped countries. And I typically refer to this, uh, you know, China and, and, you know, your Indonesia's of the world and third world countries. So that's a snapshot. And then this chart always, you know, catches people off of, there we go, our uh, bull bear indicator, because there's a lot of data on here. But I still see all the way to the right is this green line. And typically green line means we have continued tailwinds. We have continued positive upward momentum and the signals are still showing that. This was 2000, right? So you might remember, you know, the internet bubble burst. This was 2007, 2008 right here, 2008, 2009, I'm sorry. And then it came up in a, a little correction. And then we have COVID, right? So we have that little correction, but it was a head fake. So a little bit over, let's say 14 months ago, this was a concern and the signal said, hey, we got a red line. All the crossovers went, all the, all the stars aligned. And this is what we call the three wise men said, get out. But you know, I contacted a lot of my clients and I said, let's overrule what the indicators, because this is not an absolute, this is just an indicator. Does not mean that this is going to continue in that direction. And it turned out that the green line did form. And, and if we had waited for the green line to form, you miss uh, some of that upward trend. So, you know, we're constantly talking to the our investment teams and, and, and watching a lot of the data out there. So we can bring continued projections of what we think is likely to happen on a go forward basis. Now, when we get into income, this I thought was interesting. Typically gold and treasuries move together, but for the month of June, it just seems like people wanted 20 year treasuries, right? Because the yield in, you know, 4.4%, not a bad return on government backed security, but everything was up for the month, right? But now we come back to the income. Remember, retirement's about income. I, I did a whole series on the milk cow. So we're looking for yield. So think about return is different than just yield. If you have a portfolio that is just throwing off interest, now we have vehicles that have, look at these three items, right? You have the top one, high yield munis, right? So that's typically for high net worth clients, right? Then you have corporate high yield. When you see the word high yield, again, I've said this before, but you substitute the word junk. So as we're looking at this, everybody's chasing returns. And the only thing generating returns are, are things that are in more risky areas. Everything else for, for the year is losing money. And this is what I've been talking about. Now, inflation, it's amazing to me how I can spend four years to say, hey, be careful, inflations, bonds are, are, are you know, uh, exposed to inflation risk. And now it's every other day I hear inflation, inflation, inflation. Now, um, the Treasury did pull back right now, says it's, it's a short term. So we'll wait and see. We don't know. But if your portfolio, just think about it. If you retire and you need that income, what are income alternatives? And we've talked about that before. So overall, you know, I just think back to back the data 
is showing that the market is still in an upward trend. July seems to be that, like I said, 62% of the time after a, a new administration, we have a positive July. So I think July will be a good month as well. But we have to, as we get towards the tail end of August, and now we start to enter into to September, October, we got to just, you know, I don't want us to, to be panic driven, but let's just watch closely as to what's going on. Now, this indicator here, that green line is the last green line. I've said this before. We're close. We're close to seeing a red line. And what happens on the income portfolio is typically if a red line shows, there, it's not going to be a head fake right? Typically, it's going to be something the adjustments should be had in the overall portfolio so that we don't have to dig ourselves out of a hole. So this is the data. The last one I'm going to show us, economic outlook. So this is the RPI is a uh, recession probability analytics that they created. And, you know, it, it has a current reading. It's up from last month, but it's still pretty low, right? It's uh, 20. So there's no nothing that that, you know, screams to me like, oh my God, the sky is falling. There's nothing that, you know, other than I, I see clear skies right now. There's obviously the one thing that gas prices have started to creep up. There's a shortage on oil supplies. So that will all sort of trickle into the economy. And I think that we will start to see that, you know, manufacturers, uh, that's one thing I'm seeing is manufacturers having a hard time getting products out of, out of China and stuff, anything that's being created over there. So, you know, listen, I'm not telling you anything you guys don't know, but this is, you know, part of our analytics, what we're looking at on a weekly basis. I would also ask you if, uh, if there's content that you would like to, for me to do a deeper dive on, you know, social security is something I've talked about taxation in the past. I'm going to continue to find things that are important to you the public so that I can continue to to just help you to separate separate the noise that's being generated on a daily basis by the talking heads and the radios and everything that you're hearing and, and some of it is relevant but nothing you know part of our jobs as advisors is to help manage emotions let's not make knee-jerk reactions Let's develop plans that we can step into and execute along the way. If, if you guys have any questions, guys and gals that are on the call, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help, happy to answer any questions. There's my email address. If you were invited here by an advisor, please absolutely circle back with them, uh, ask them. And again, I, I hope you find this uh, content informative. I hope everybody's well. Um, here in New Jersey, you know, after vacation, I came back, we had a couple days of rain, but sun's out. So go get some sun. Have a great day. And uh, again, I look forward to seeing everybody soon. Bye-bye.